Question 10 says, Gases confined in a tank at a pressure of 11.2 atmospheres and a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. If two-thirds of the gas is withdrawn and the temperature is raised to 74 degrees Celsius, what is the, what is the pressure of the gas remaining in the tank? So again, just like in the last two videos, um, if you don't know how I'm using this equation, you can go back and watch either one of the last two. But we're going to use pressure times volume equals the moles times the gas law constant times the temperature. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to say that there's an initial pressure and an initial volume, and it's equal to the initial number of moles times the gas law constant times the initial temperature. And so we can divide this by the final pressure times the final volume, and it should equal the, the, uh, all the initial moles and, and temperature times the final number of moles and times the gas law constant times the final temperature. And so what we see is the gas law constant is the same throughout, and it can be canceled out. And if we look at, back at the problem, it's asking us to find the pressure of the gas remaining in the tank. So we want to find the pressure... The volume is the tank. The tank uh, doesn't change, so the volume doesn't change, so that cancels out. And then finally, um, it wants to know, it says that um, if two-thirds of the gas is withdrawn and the temperature is raised, so the, the number of moles and the temperature are changed, it wants to know how much does the pressure change. So since it's saying that two-thirds of the moles are withdrawn, that means that N2 is equal to um, N1 minus two-thirds of N1. So, um, in other words, N2 equals uh, one-third of N1. And so I can rewrite my equation, P1 over P2 is equal to N1 over N2 times T1 over T1 over T2, and I can substitute in one-third of, uh, of N over 1 for my N2. So I can get equals, uh, cross that out, equals N1 over T1 divided by one-third N1 over uh, times T2. So I'll just move all of the, uh, all of this equation up. And you can see by looking at this, now I got an N1 on the, I got an N1 on the bottom, and I've got an N1 on the top, and so I can cancel these out, and I can get that the, ini the initial pressure over the final pressure is equal to um, 1 times T1, the initial temperature, over 1 third times T2. Now, what I like to do is when I'm, when, every time or any time, I divide by a fraction, I like to just multiply by the reciprocal. And so what that means is I can flip this fraction upside down, and then I can put the top on top. So I can say that the initial pressure over the final pressure is equal to 3 over 3 times T1, the initial temperature, over 1 times the final temperature. So now I'm in a situation where I can rearrange this and solve for P2 and have a nice clean equation. So P2, the final pressure, is equal to P, uh, P1, or the initial pressure, times T2, the final temperature, over 3 times the initial temperature. So I can plug in my values. Uh, the one thing I have to be careful about is the temperature that it gave me was not in Kelvin, it was in Celsius. And so uh, I kind of want to explain what happens when, or why it, Celsius doesn't work. You can't have a negative pressure. You can have a negative Celsius. So Kelvin never goes below, below zero, so um, Kelvin cannot be less than zero. So that means that the pressure can never be less than zero, which makes perfect sense. You can never have negative pressure. When we think of something like an implosion, like if we sucked all of the, all of the air out of a plastic bottle, that's not negative pressure on the inside of the bottle. That's the 
uh, the difference in pressure. Though there's a little pressure in there, but the pressure on the outside would be greater, and so that's why the bottle would implode. Not because there's negative pressure. There can never be a negative pressure. And so that's just one of a couple of reasons why you can't keep it in Celsius. So with that in mind, the T1, it was uh, 26 degrees Celsius, and so that equals, you have to add 273.15, so that equals 299.15 Kelvin. And the T2 was 74 degrees Celsius, and add 273.15, that equals 347.15 Kelvin. With my, my P1, my pressure was 11.2 atmospheres, and so I, I, if I take the P1 and multiply it by the, by the 299.15, or I'm sorry, the 347.15, it's P1 times T2, so I take my P1 times my T2, and what I get is, is uh, 388.08, and I got to divide that by um, by the three, so T1 times three, so that equals uh, 897.45. And uh, so the units on top are going to be atmospheres, atmospheres Kelvin. The units on bottom are simply going to be Kelvin. The Kelvins cancel out, and when we divide this thing out, it's going to give us a, a pressure of 4.332 atmospheres. And so that is the answer for uh, question 10.